Patient complains of spacing in the anterior teeth region. On examination, the following appearance is seen. So here we have been given the clinical image, okay, and we have been asked to make a diagnosis. So what we see here in this image is that there is this spacing between the centrals, yes, but also what is characteristically seen here is this additional tooth that is present near the midline of the uh, maxillary arch. Okay, so this is a conical shaped tooth that we can see which is bringing about some amount of diversion or disturbance to the position of the central incisor. Now this is a very classical example of a mesiodense. So what is a mesiodense? A mesiodense is a supernumerary tooth okay, or an extra tooth. So apart from the teeth that we are going to see in the dentition, the set amount of teeth, whatever additional teeth are going to be present are known as supernumerary tooth. They usually result as a disturbance from during the initiation and proliferation stages of dental development or they can be related to a larger syndrome or an idiopathic finding. So the syndromes that are associated with uh, supernumerary teeth, okay, they are also important such as the cleidocranial dysplasia, okay, Gardner syndrome. and uh, of course cleft lip and palate right so this again can be asked in the examination the syndromes which are seen or supernumerary teeth are seen in which syndromes okay this is important now there are four different types of supernumerary teeth that are usually seen or they can be classified into four types the first type is conical the second is tuberculate the third is supplemental and the fourth is odontom. Okay, so conical is basically any small peg shaped conical type of tooth uh, or a tooth which appears conical in appearance and it is usually seen in the permanent dentition. And the mesiodense is a very classical example of a conical supernumerary tooth and it is usually seen along the midline of the maxillary arch and it is usually one in number or it is single. Okay, tuberculate type of supernumerary tooth is, the, is that type which has more than uh, one cusp on it. So in the conical, there'll be one cusp as we can see here. Okay, So this is an example of a conical type of supernumerary tooth. This is a mesiodense which is present along the midline of the maxillary arch, right? But when there is more than one cusp, so if you see here, these supernumerary teeth that are present, uh, lingual to the central incisors, they have these multiple uh, cusp formation along the edges, right? So this type of, uh, when there is a tuberculate type, so it looks like a tubercles are present on it. So this is tuberculate type of supernumerary tooth, okay? And they are usually bilateral. So they're usually present on the palatal aspect of the central incisors and they're often paired. Okay, so the conical one is usually single and the tuberculate type is paired. So if you are given a super, an image of the supernumerary teeth which is present and you see it's along the midline, if it is conical and single, it is most likely to be a mesiodense and if it is paired and has multiple cusp-like formations on it, then it is a type of tuberculate. Okay. The other types are the supplemental types. So supplemental uh, resembles a normal tooth. So it can resemble either a lateral incisor or the premolars or even a molar. So usually we see this supplemental molar which is present distal to the third molar that is there. So it looks exactly like the normal tooth would look in the dentition. So here we saw the conical and tuberculate. They do not resemble a normal tooth of the arch. But the supplemental extra supernumerary tooth is going to resemble the tooth exactly how it is. Any of the tooth. It could be lateral incisor, premolars, molars, etc. Okay. Now, odontom. So, odontom is the fourth category which was given by Howard. However, it is not universally accepted as a type of supernumerary tooth because it is a tumor of the odontogenic origin. Okay. Or it's a hamartoma. So it is non, it is not uh, cancerous. It is a benign congregation of normal cells that is seen. Okay, so it is not a neoplasm. It is a hamartomatous type of a growth. Now these odontomes can be of two types. They can be complex 
or they can be compound now the complex type is diffuse okay and it does not resemble a tooth at all so it just appears as calcific collection of uh, 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 cells okay so it does not resemble the tooth whereas compound has some similarities to a natural tooth but again does not resemble a tooth so from all of these type of supernumerary teeth the only one that will resemble any of the tooth in the arch is going to be the supplemental type okay the compound will resemble it superficially uh, a tooth superficially so here when we see uh, mesiodens odontoma talens cusp or taurodontism so we know this is a mesiodens because it is a conical extra tooth which is present single in number and behind the central incisor lingual to the central incisors along the midline and odontoma may be present anywhere in the uh, anywhere in the dental arch okay it does not have a specific position of occurrence and it does not resemble the tooth now a talon cusp is is an enamel projection that is seen along the cingulum area uh, on the lingual surface of the incisors okay so this here this is not touching the incisors at all it is placed away from the incisors so this is not a talon cusp as well and taurodontism is seen usually in the molars so in the molars where the pulp cavity has in has enlarged and there is uh, the Uh, pulp chamber has been enlarged, and there is going to be displacement, a pital displacement of the pulpal floor, so the teeth appear bull-like. Okay, so if this is a molar, the tooth is going to appear bull-like because the uh, pulp canal is going to shift apically. So this enlargement of the pulp canal. So taurodontism is usually seen with posterior teeth and not in the anterior region. Okay, so this is a type of a mesiodens that is seen. now the clinical relevance of a, uh, of a mesiodens is that uh, it is going to disrupt the normal occlusal development right so the early intervention so when you see that there's a mesiodens that's present you know it is going to have some uh, unfavorable effect on the dentition so here you can already see that the central incisor has been displaced from its normal position so the intervention that is required is its uh, extraction as early as possible now sometimes a mesiodens may not have been erupted and may be present between the central incisors causing their displacement so whenever you see a diastema which is more than 2 mm in size okay so a, a diastema larger than 2 mm if it is present then you should always suspect either a supernumerary tooth is present in the midline or there may be any intra intra bony lesion so in those situations uh, the clinician should do a occlusal or a radio periapical radiograph of this area to rule out any uh, mesiodens or any other lesion that may be present along the midline okay so this is the clinical relevance of it so here this is a mesiodens so some of the important points from this like i mentioned is that you should know the syndromes which are associated with supernumerary teeth the different types of supernumerary teeth and also the clinical application that if you see a midline diastem of more than 2 mm then you should always suspect a mesiodens that is present in the midline 